Hi friends, Pastor Jesse here at Peckway Evangelical Church in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, where we exist to help you know and follow Jesus. One of the ways that we do that is through what you're participating in right now by watching this video. It's these daily read-throughs of scripture where we take a chapter of God's word, a chapter of the Bible. We read it through word for word, verse by verse. I share an insight or two that the Holy Spirit highlighted for me from the passage as we read. And then we go about our days. And the reason that we do that is because Jesus himself tells us in John chapter 15 that the best way to both know him and thus follow him well is to store his word away in our hearts, to be in his word in the Bible daily for ourselves. And so this is not meant to be our daily time in God's word only. It's meant to be in addition to that. It's also meant to encourage us and to equip us to be in God's word, to know how it looks like, what it looks like to be in God's word for ourselves. And right now in this series, we're in the midst of a read through of the book of Genesis, the beginning of beginnings, as we're calling it. We're all the way up to Genesis chapter 16, but we still have a long way to go for those 50 chapters in the book of Genesis. But last time, if you were with us, you saw that God made this covenant with a man named Abram and promised that even though Abram and his wife Sarah were without children, God was going to somehow, even in their old age and well past the, the point of natural childbirth, he was going to give them a son. And out of that son, out of their descendants, is going to come a line of individuals that are going to be a blessing to all nations. He's going to make those, those uh, descendants of Abram and Sarah a blessing to the world and a people for his name's sake. And now in Genesis 16, we're going to see how Abram and Sarah, they actually are going to run ahead of God, his timing and his plans. And we'll see how God works even in the midst of that, that running ahead and that, that sin going against God and his plan and his timing. So join us in Genesis chapter 16, where the word of the Lord says, Now Sarah, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. She had a female Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said to Abram, Behold, now the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. So go into my servant. It may be that I shall attain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarah. So after Abram had lived ten years in the land of Canaan, Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to Abram, her husband, as a wife. And he went in with Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. And Sarah said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to you, to your embrace, and when she saw she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarah, Behold, your servant is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarah dealt harshly with Hagar, and she fled from her presence. The angel of the Lord found Hagar by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to shore. And he said to Hagar, Hagar, servant of Sarah, where have you come from and where are you going? And she said, I am fleeing from my mistress, Sarah. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for the multitudes. And the angel of the Lord said to her, behold, you are pregnant and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord has listened to your affliction. He shall be a wild donkey of a man, his hand against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he shall dwell over against all his kinsmen. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, you are the God who God of seeing. For she said, truly here I have been seen by him who looks after me. Therefore the well was called Beer Lahoy Leroy, to, which lies between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram called the name of his son whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abram was six, 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. This is the word of the Lord in Genesis chapter 16. And so what we see here, as I kind of gave away before we even dove into the passage, is Sarah. She is impatient. She runs before the Lord, doesn't trust the Lord's plan, the Lord's promise to her and Abram that, that she's actually going to bear a son, that the, the two of them are going to conceive a son and have a child because it's well past the age of, of natural childbirth. And so she says, well, maybe maybe God's plan is actually to, to bear a son through my servant, through my May servant named Hagar. And so she sends Abram and Hagar together. Hagar conceives. And in that, uh, Sarah actually becomes jealous of Hagar and, and treats her so harshly that Hagar runs away. And it's God who actually finds Hagar in her running away, finds her in her destined place. He says to her, return to your mistress, return to Sarah, return to her, submit to her, and I will make your children a blessing. I will make your son a blessing. 
and a ruler. And so the Lord is there called by Hagar, the God who sees her, the God who has truly seen her and looked after her. And this is a powerful passage of scripture because we see, number one, that God works and God works his good plans. God works his goodness and shows and showers us his goodness, even when we sin and run before him, even when we fall short of following his plan, right? Hagar is, is running away. Literally, God sees her. God calls to her. She sees the God who sees her. She, she feels the love of the God who sees her, and she just revels in it, and she submits to the God. She goes and does what God calls her to do, and God, because of her obedience, he does give her a son named Ishmael, and Ishmael becomes all that God promises that he would become a, a man, a wild donkey of a man who will have his kinsmen beneath him. And God, we will see as we actually move into Genesis 18 and, and, six, and 17, we will see that, that even against Sarah's running ahead, even against Sarah's rebellion, even against Abram's not trusting in the promise that was distinctly and clearly given to him, God is going to work and he's going to bring forth that son. He's going to bring forth their son, Isaac, and he will live up to his end of the covenant like we talked about in the last video. He's going to live up to both his end of the covenant and our end of the covenant because here we are one chapter after the covenant was given and we've already messed it up, right? Mankind, Abram and Sarah have already run ahead of God and trusted in their own planning, in their own understanding, in their own wisdom ahead of the Lord's. So how can we, the question for the passage today is how can we trust more in God's plan? How can we rest in God's timing and the assurance that God sees us, that he knows what it is that we need, and that he is truly looking after us? That's what Hagar points us and calls us to do. So thank you for joining us today. Next time we'll be in Genesis chapter 17 and continue this powerful study of God's word. And I hope until then, God blesses the rest of your day.